I wanted to welcome um, my three students um, from Uzbekistan who I just uh, invited into the Zoom as well, who are, um, we were just discussing Minecraft and virtual worlds a little bit before um, we jumped in here. Um, also, um, I, I, I sent kind of a panicked email to my co-presenters this morning that I've had two computers die this week, and now I have no computer that plays Minecraft, <laughs> but um, but I can still uh, I, I can still host this event, and um, I, I hopefully I can pass it over to uh, to Vance and Don and Jane, who will be able to actually show us some things in game. Um, if you attended my talk yesterday, I talked a little bit about um, how the Minecraft server for EVO is set up, and um, oh, there's a chat. Okay, um, it says, you can say we're going to, to share Minecraft. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so um, I am gonna show you um, one of the things that I talked about a little bit yesterday, and that was a, um, a, a plugin that we added uh, to our um, uh, Minecraft server. Um, again, for those of you that don't know, um, EVO Minecraft is, um, uh, connected to the Electronic Village online. Oh, it looks like Bobby's in there. Great. Um, it's it's connected to the Electronic Village online, and um, the it says someone else is screen sharing. I'm going to take over the screen sharing. Okay. Um, so um, this was this is the map of the EVO server. Again, the participants on this server are mainly English teachers or um, people like Don who are English teacher adjacent. Um, uh, also, we have um, a couple of um, uh, a couple of younger members, a couple of, of children are, are using this server as well. Um, Jane's, uh, uh, Jane's son, uh, Maddie is one of like the heavy users of this, um, but it's also, a world that we can go to and hang out at. And we try to keep this, uh, even though the EVO only goes for a couple of weeks in, uh, in the winter, um, we try to keep something up all year, you know, in case people want to join. And we, and we've, um, we have both the Minecraft server and the uh, Discord server where we can chat with each other. And then we also have a Facebook group. Um, so we have, we have multiple places where we, where we get in touch with each other. Um, you can see as I'm looking at this, this is, it's called DynMap. I talked about it in my presentation yesterday. And DynMap is a plugin for Minecraft that allows you to have a Google Maps-like web-based interface for your uh, Minecraft server. And so you can see all of the different biomes and all of the different worlds. And I can see where Vance is playing. If I zoom in a little bit, you know, for those of you familiar with Minecraft, then maybe this might look a little familiar. I can see here, this is like a satellite view of Vance and Bobby's house and they're hanging out inside. And um, mm -hmm. if, if you look on the right here, I have um, different ways to view the world. So like right now I'm looking at it as like a, um, uh, a three-dimensional view, but I can also change it. So I'm looking at kind of like a bird's eye map-like view. Um, I have maps of, some of the other worlds uh, that we have here. I can click on Bobby and it will go directly to where Bobby is. I can click on Vance and it'll go directly to where Vance is. It looks like Bobby must have jumped. Uh, pretty far away from from Vance, so like somebody she's, could she's just collecting string in the string. Ah, farm. she's she's at the string farm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, which when we talk about the string farm, that's something my brother built on this server that um, makes it easy for um, players to harvest strings, which they get from spiders. So it's like a place where they can fight spiders and get springs. Uh, that's get, cool. I thought that uh, uh, Sura built it, but I'll correct anything I've said. I that's good to know. Um, I know uh, Ari built one. I, I didn't know if this was the one he built or maybe Sura built it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There might be, there might really be more cool. than one. We're going to go uh, there and get string. We're going to convert the string to emeralds and then to arrows. So that's excellent. what we're going to do on our tour today. Excellent. So, you know, this, this is a site that people can, I'm going to share this link before I give up the, um, the, uh, the, the screen sharing. Um, but um, if we hop back over, if I hop back over into Zoom, 
create just I have Zoom and Teams active right now. How do I get back? I really to the like chat? the dynamic map. It really revolutionizes playing on Minecraft. Yeah, it, it is. It is something right. that Strangely, is kind of re resource intensive. I actually don't like to use it. Uh, you know, as far as what I like to do is the kind of running wild and discovering new territory. And like, if I can see the dynamic map and say, oh, uh, that this biome is that direction. It, or this, uh, you know, it's almost like having a cheat sheet. It is, it is a cheat, it's a hack, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah. When is um, our explorer? I'm having trouble getting back to the chat. Um, could someone who's familiar with it share the link to the uh, the dynamic map in the chat? Sure. Yeah. And then I will um, I will give up my share to um, uh, somebody who's actually playing Minecraft to kind of show some of these places, and then um, I can talk about some of these things and maybe uh, direct you a little bit and. Um, answer any questions people have as we as we move there forward. Is a, there is a good comment by Walton Burns in the chat who says, as a teacher, it seems like the map would be helpful to keep track of students, though. <laughs> Maybe was that an idea, Aaron? Um, so I initially installed the map because um, I, not long after we set up the server, I asked on the Facebook group um, what plugins people were using with their students. And one teacher, I can't remember who it was, if you're here, please tell us about it. But, um, but one teacher chimed in and said that he really liked, I, th I think it was a he, that he really liked um, using DynMap with his students and his students really liked it because then they could see each other's builds and they could also see where people were um, and go find each other. Um, so that was something they liked about the community aspect of it. Um, also, one thing that I've been playing around with, and um, since I don't really have students in Minecraft, um, you know, I have, I have you guys, I have teachers in Minecraft. Um, one thing I did was I set up Padlet, which is a, um, a tool that a lot of teachers use. And I made it, I, I made a Padlet that was set up, and I think I can get to that, um, um, a, a, a Padlet where people could submit screenshots of their builds and my idea was that um, um, I've used Padlet for other things. Like for example, um, um, when, we, when we were able to meet in person with students, um, one thing we did with Padlet was um, we walked around our town of Athens, Ohio, and the students took pictures of local art with their phones and submitted it all to a Padlet where they could all um, discuss it and talk about it. Um, so I tried to do something similar. I, with, I yeah. I can I have the Padlet on. If you, oh, okay. You're, you're you're good. Yeah, I got to get logged in, but yeah. Um, okay. But you could share the link if you want. Oh, okay, okay, I'll share the link. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So basically, just like a place where people can upload their screenshots. Granted, we're already uploading them to Facebook. We're already uploading them to Discord. So. You know, it's like another place where people can upload. Um, but you know, sometimes you have a reason to not be on social media. You know, maybe with your students, maybe you don't have a Facebook group with your students. Maybe you don't want to have a Facebook group with your students. So Padlet would be something kind of outside the world of social media. Uh, it looks like my Padlet's not opening. Or if I you if you let not? me share your screen, I'll show them. Go for it. Go for it. Right now, uh, you're sharing because and I can't. Oh, I, I, I don't have sharing rights. Okay, I stopped. Oh. Okay. It's this one right here. Aaron, you can. Yeah, there's my Padlet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And actually, this was just, again, I called it the Builders Guild because my thinking was if people um, could submit their builds on here, then they could. Um, we could have ratings on them and then you could win or, or gain some sort of perks on the server if you uh, if the people in the community uh, like your builds. Uh, that picture that Jane is showing <laughs> is uh, her son, Maddie, raining fire down on all the adults uh, in a meeting last year. 
Um, yeah, so we do a lot with screenshots and sharing things. They tend to do that. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you can see there's some comments on the Padlet where people shared things. Um, you can see kind of some of our more uh, complex builds there, things that we've done. Um, this is the again, creative world. And yeah, um, Jane, could you share that URL in the chat? Is that yes, a possibility? I did. OK, yeah. great. And I have it open. I, I put the, the settings right there for Padlet. I made it so this Padlet's completely open so um, anonymous people can make posts and things. Yeah, that first, that, that balloon was built by my little brother. <laughs> um, and um, it's, it's not only a balloon, but it's also a, a farm for creepers. Um, so you can collect um, uh, gunpowder. Um, yeah. Which emphasizes a little bit of the violence in the game is you can collect gunpowder and build TNT. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to stop screen sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, Vance, uh, did you want to share um, anything? Or Don, did you want to share anything in game? Because again, my computer can't do it. <laughs> Don? Uh, no, I don't think so, really. I mean, Don uh, was going to talk about the affordance of Minecraft and or for language. Well, uh, Would you like to speak about that then, Don? Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just give my sort of outside perspective uh, as somebody who researches uh, language interaction. Yeah. So you can sort of, well, what kind of language uh, is to be found uh, during Minecraft play? And I think you can sort of categorize it into several different types. There's uh, what you can say, self-directed talk, uh, where people just say things like, oh, no, uh, it's not communication to somebody, or it's not obviously so. Uh, sometimes it's a little unclear, like uh, in gameplay the other day, Jane says, I don't have any tools. Now, this is a comment, but that comment led me to then throw her out a tool. So even though it wasn't officially, it wasn't a request, it wasn't direct kind of commu uh, communication. Um, I think there's a lot of narration that goes on in tutorial style videos and even some of our gameplay. And that's different. You know, you have an audience and you're talking to that audience. So I, I think there's a lot of these different kinds of things. And in terms of language learning, I think some of those styles of, of talk are more valuable than others. So I would say the self-directed talk is perhaps not so valuable um, in terms of you know, kind of noise in the noise in the system. That's that's okay. really all I think I could I could say at this point. Okay, Th thank you. Um, and I, I actually, um, actually, I like to um, talk about the language triptych for gaming. And this is something I borrowed from CLIL, the language triptych for, uh, for in CLIL. And I turn it into language for gaming, which is, you know, in this Minecraft uh, world, we have blocks and items and kids get to learn the the names of the blocks or the names of the things that they play, they use to play. Um, like, uh, like Vance had, Vance had just mentioned about Finch giving a redstone uh, lesson and he he was using re referring to uh, he was using this thingy this thingy and Vance what did he say this thingy was it was the a repeater right yeah so, that's right he he just he he knew the concepts but he's a young kid and uh, you know he he knew how to explain what to do but he was kind of paraphrasing a lot and I mean you can hear the you can listen to it yourself mm -hmm. um, but. Um, yeah, it's just, I was interesting that he was, he's a native speaker. So, yeah. and he's living in the United States. He has a British accent. So, um, yeah. you know, he's, but anyway, it's just language development. Yeah. So they, so, to, yeah. so, so he's actually, um, it, you know, later on, he might develop the, the, the way of using a repeater as a vocabulary and to introduce the um, redstone uh, how it works. And this is how like language 
of gaming can be developed in the world, you, in the different biomes of, of Minecraft world. And also language for gaming, which is the, the way we interact with players in world. Like I just told, you know, like what Don just mentioned, I don't, I said, I don't have a, an ax. Um, so this is interaction. Um, well, kids get to kids gets to interact with people in the virtual world for EFL settings like in tai, Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, we don't speak English in like outside of the classroom. So I think virtual worlds is a perfect place for them to get to interact with players um, around the world, you know, using English as a lingua franca. And um, that, that's definitely how my son, Matty and Emmanuel, Rose's son has you know, been doing their interacting in English. Um, a kid from Taiwan and a kid from Brazil, they're using English to communicate. And le learn and language through gaming is all because of the language exposure in the world for language of gaming and also interacting with uh, gamers and that's the how they gain language through gaming and um, so Don was say, saying earlier like you know this is a this is a big circle where language use is in Minecraft is a smaller circle, but they're exposing to the video game, the video uh, YouTube videos and reading the books. Um, that's what helps them develop their language as well. Um, uh, yeah. Gonna... Mariana, Mariana, I was wondering whether you could uh, tell us how much time do you imagine your son was actually in game, like talking in English in game. Um, uh, I, I actually do not know, but a lot, I would say. Um, and it's not just talking. Uh, at first it was just uh, chatting, right, Jane? Because uh, you chat through Minecraft and then later when they figure out that they could easily communicate using some kind of uh, voice over internet app, in this case, it, at first it was uh, Skype and then later on, Discord was uh, uh, was there and it's still, I think um, uh, Philip is older now, so mm -hmm. I think for a few hours, uh, maybe per day, not too much, while my uh, younger son, he spends a lot of time, uh, but he has, as just Jane mentioned, um, they have friends from uh, different parts of the world and the time zone is the problem, which makes me a problem as a mother. They have to go to school <laughs> yeah. and they have a friend from I don't know, um, USA yeah. who just woke up and it's for them, it's like lunchtime or something. And, uh, or for instance, it is uh, very late in the evening. He has to go to bed and he has a friend from um, USA or uh, they want to chat. So, um, so um, well, my, that, my, my feeling is that you, you really have to have a lot of in-game talking uh, yes. to make significant gains from in-game language. I think most of the learning comes from these outside resources that Jane is referring to. The, yeah, yes. you know, the motivation comes from the game, but then you spend you know, hours and hours looking at YouTube videos, uh, maybe scouring wikis and um, you know, Minecraft fora, trying to find uh, the answers to how you do something in world. I think you have actually, uh, you have a point on that. Uh, even though a lot of vocabulary has been learned through Minecraft itself, as uh, Jane explained. Uh, but then again, um, after playing with uh, native speakers, uh, it enhanced and improved their uh, speaking abilities. Um, oh, and of that, course, yeah. through outside, uh, 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 but the, the best thing what I loved about um, our sons and especially the older one is that he didn't just play and learn English. He started creating his own either worlds or servers or uh, uh, videos or tutorials or and, and now at, at the age of 17 even though he told me the other day that he started uh, to programming he programs uh, he has his own games now. Uh, so I would say there are, there are a lot of things that actually came from just Minecraft. A lot of things uh, uh, that he only learned. He didn't just learn English. He learned many other soft skills and even uh, great, technical. Yeah. 
yeah, technical stuff, which for me, we, I'm so happy that we have him now. I'm just saying, I don't know what's happening here. He just come, t -t 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 click, 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 click. That's it. I fixed it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what did you do just now? <laughs> so, yeah, it's well, not this absolutely, absolutely my sense that that the idea of simply having Minecraft for the purpose of as a replacement for language classes somehow doesn't doesn't capture what you want. You want it, this idea of there's this full complete package and that uh, learning, acquiring language is part of that complete package of, of uh, computer literacy and world literacy and kind of a whole range of uh, personal development. Can but I say you can do here? a lot of things in Minecraft. Uh, you can leave these notes in English. You uh, you can have like a, let's say um, in Minecraft, uh, if you are uh, very into gaming, you, students can try to figure out the trails. I was just watching a a, a video of a colleague uh, who. Um, who is uh, trying to motivate her students to do more uh, online course through gaming. So if you motivate them within the game, Minecraft is itself, uh, let's say, uh, to do certain things, to, to, to seek, to search, like, like for, a, uh, for an Easter egg or something, they, they, they actually pick up the things and they learn by doing it with not, with, without even realizing. I was talking to a colleague from Japan the other day. He was saying, how do my students speak English so well? And I said, it's not only me. I, in the classroom, I'm not doing that much. I do, but I try to motivate them to expose themselves to the language, whether that is from gaming, because mostly boys do play games online, uh, or watching um, 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 subtitled uh, uh, in English or American movies, not synchronized, but just real language and this is how mainly the language should be learned in my opinion uh, of course you get other thing, uh, things methodologies mm -hmm. and language and grammar uh, from from the classes right but I mean, uh, well, I've well. often said that my my view oh, whenever no. whenever I've ever seen the the lessons like an ESL lesson mm -hmm. prepared uh, in world to me it always seems like I always use the phrase old wine in new bottles. It seems like 1950s methodology ways of viewing language that have simply been, if, let's say, encased in Minecraft blocks. But I mean, if you're still just teaching the verb tenses, uh, uh, you know, standard grammatical objects, then I think you kind of missed the point. And could I say a few John, words? It doesn't here? have to be that way. It doesn't. Yeah, have to be I, like am I, oh, maybe I'm muted. Yes. Am I muted? Hello? I, we, can, we can hear you, Vance. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to illustrate a few things in Minecraft. Uh, first of all, I'm practicing sustainable uh, farming. I, I'm taking, I'm harvesting wheat. I've uh, taken carrots so I can eat, but I've also taken wheat so I can trade it with villagers. And uh, I operate sustainably here, as you can see. I just let a bunch of sheep out and I, I think they're on the outside. And uh, yes, they are. Okay, so I let those sheep out. They'll go wander in the forest. I'll make more sheep. Oh, here's a monster over here, a skeleton. He could be dangerous. Okay, so let's Let's uh, watch out, Jane, skeleton in the neighborhood. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I've got, I'll show you what's in my inventory. I've got a bow, but I've only got five arrows. So I need more arrows. And uh, I'm going to go through a process. The process is that I'm going to uh, visit a place where you can get string because to make an arrow, you need string and you need a stick. Uh, arrow, sorry, you need feathers, you need flint. You need, well, anyway, okay, yeah. So, uh, oh, oh, uh, sorry, I need string to trade it with a fisherman to get emeralds. And um, then I can trade the emeralds for arrows. And I'll show you how that works. And I can also use wheat to get emeralds as well. So I've got a lot of wheat here. I'm going to a place where there's more wheat. But first of all, I'm gonna go catch up with Bobby She's on the string farm. And by the way, you guys don't have to stop talking. Uh, just, you know, let, let me say a few words every now and then. But if you have questions, uh, 
you're still in the conversation. So if you if you want to ask about anything or you want to talk about anything, that's just fine. I'm going to go over to a string farm. Maybe Jane wants to join me. I'm going to warp to. Jane, oh, sorry, warp. would you like yeah. to? Explain a little bit uh, your view of uh, Minecraft and, and language uh, to to Donald. Oh, Myself. well, I, I, I believe, well, um, early on, earlier, um, Aaron was asking that he uh, liked to hear more about the books. Um, and this is one of the points that Don made that um, um, because of the interest in Minecraft, um, kids get to learn more about it outside of the Minecraft as well. And take a look at these books. These, these are the, this is like a Minecraft manual that um, Maddie has read. As an EFL learner, these are pretty difficult for them, for him um, at the age of say six. Like, um, but he's really because of the graphics and because he's playing in world, um, he, he's able to pick up a lot of things from reading these books. And later on, there are uh, fictions um, that created um, based on the Minecraft, uh, you know, playing Minecraft. And so these, he later on um, started to read read um, these this fiction like fiction. Books. And I think that's a lot of um, reading. That's how he gained his reading, um, uh, you know, comprehension and skills as well. And another thing another that Tom mentioned is that um, if you're interacting, there's not enough talk in world, and um, you have to be able to talk a lot. Or if you're having lessons in in Minecraft, um, what 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 um, we have experience in the past is that teachers are using the old ways like information gap um, in Minecraft world. And so Don mentioned that these are old wine and new bottle, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. You, we can um, design um, sca scavenger hunts or task-based learning uh, where like this, what Vance is showing us to is to get a, a an arrow, but it ha takes a lot of process of going through to go through um, in order to complete that task. And um, through this uh, process, they're picking up the language. If it's a collaborative work, then they're interacting with the, the players. And Camilla uh, Yamashiro, can, would, would you like to take the mic? Can I explain though while I'm here because I want to go elsewhere? Can I explain what we're doing? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, this is the string farm that Aaron was talking about that his brother built. And what there's a spawner back here and it, the players are protected by glass. And the spiders here, when you kill spiders, they drop string. And the machine here, Bobby can kill spiders. And if you open the chest, you can see that the chest is filling up with string. So as Bobby kills spiders, there should be more string added here. Now I can take the string and I can put it in my inventory. And this is what's in the chest. As you can see, the chest is filling up now with more string. So as Bobby kills spiders, uh, we get more string. We can get more arrows. So we're going to take that over now and get some emeralds. So Bobby, have you got a lot of string? Okay, so if you give me just another minute now, I'm going to pop over to another warp and then you guys can continue talking. Dakota is here. Oh, Dakota's in this. Oh, Dakota isn't here online with us. Okay, so we're going to warp over from the string farm where we collect string. This is all part of a process. Process, describing processes are, is one aspect of language learning and one art aspect of literacy and communication. So, oh, sorry, I have to go. I said a home yeah, for this place. You know, like there's no reason that that uh, can't be simply written down as a kind of a handout uh, two students ahead of time. Okay, I would, I would have the students, I would yeah. tell them, or, or yeah, there's so many ways you could do it. You yeah, can, but you, you know, can, say, just you like, can okay, write it or they can write have, it. You have to do, you have to first do this, then you have to do this, maybe a little instructions for how, how you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've, we've come up to the top of a place where there are, there's a market up here. I'm not sure who built this. I don't know, Aaron, do you know who built this? Looks like Ari. Yeah, I be. think that looks like something that uh, Ari, who is my brother, uh, might have built. Uh huh. Can I ask okay, how so old how old Ari is? 
You keep saying uh, your little your little brother. Uh, I think he turned forty this year. <laughs> but he, he 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 does have a six year old son. <laughs> Maybe okay. the son helped him. <laughs> Uh, I would just like to add up that there were some cases of uh, teachers uh, using Minecraft uh, to have their students motivated in creative writing. And that was one of one of my idea uh, when mm -hmm. I created the scenario. Uh, so students were supposed to do many things, not just they should create a story, they should build in uh, into a Minecraft or uh, or it could be vice versa. They could build something and then uh, write. Uh, uh, so it, it, it has a lot of, you, you know, project based learning, task based learning, and it's fun. But of course, we have to bear in mind, but that not all students might might be interested in gaming in general. I'm not talking about Minecraft because I see in my classes in uh, secondary school boys. Yes. And I will tell you all the boys speak English great. There are rarely some cases that do not speak, but these boys mainly do not play games. Girls, on the other cases, they play less uh, games, but they do play mobile, uh, mobile uh, um, games on mobile phones, right? Not, not like uh, boys mainly. So this is what I notice. And whenever uh, I get students who are not very good at English when they come to secondary school, because they start learning English in Croatia at the age of seven, let's say in the primary school, um, and then usually through four years of um, uh, uh, secondary school, sometimes I try to motivate them to um, improve their speaking skills at least, and definitely reading skills through either this kind of intrinsic motivation for, through gaming or watching videos, um, YouTube tutorials. So it depends. It, it, I always have to figure out what works for uh, for uh, some of them because they have to um, quickly improve or enhance their knowledge of English language and to pick up with other uh, other students. So. It, it depends. No, I think really absolutely. Ideas. That's right. that's the approach. I, I think uh, that's something that just needs to be communicated with people that maybe are coming new to Minecraft as teachers, teachers that maybe have uh, a, a, that want to follow a curriculum. And I think that's the problem. What, what Vance mentioned earlier, the idea of saying, uh, my normal class has a curriculum. We have a syllabus. Yeah. So this is what I do this week. This is what I do the second week. And so then you end up producing these kind of lesson plan style uh, experiences, which that's that's not what you're describing. You know, what you're describing is a very much the project based. And I think the project based learning uh, fits well with Minecraft. I've just traded emeralds for string, uh, for sorry, emeralds for arrows. Now I can also trade wheat for emeralds. And this is where the sustainability aspect fits in. So I can get emeralds from this guy. And also, if I come here empty handed, I can also uh, take wheat from here. So I can, I can take his wheat if I want. And I can, as long as I replant it, it will be OK. So I don't have to go through all of that. But let me just, oh, I got an egg to a duck was walking around and dropped an Easter egg there. So when you take something from some place, uh, from a farm, you should replant it. So, but this is just to point out, this is something that uh, I can explain to you, or you could, your students could explain it to you, or your students could do this and explain it to you. But basically, if you want to get arrows, and you need arrows, if uh, you're going to, well, they're quite handy for shooting uh, skeletons or shooting at you or for finding, uh, uh, shooting phantoms that are coming out of the sky. Uh, but anyway, they're hard to get too. So uh, what I've done is I've, I can go back up there and I can, I've got more emeralds now so I can get more arrows, but uh, that's just a process that I follow that uh, sometimes when, I, when I'm working with my students, they build things for me and then they explain to me what they built. So these explanation processes where you can make you could uh, make a video and you could say, okay, here's how I go and get string, get emeralds, get arrows, and then uh, cut out the process of having to make your own arrows, which is very tedious and requires a lot of resources. And, and notice here, Vance, if you go back to your inventory, mm -hmm. if you go back to your inventory and, you know, if you click on the, the um, like carrot, um, you know, 
there there's words that oh uh, yeah is that you know this is a way That's that right. EFL learners um, gain their mm -hmm. um, spelling because um, some mm -hmm. sometimes um, when they need to ask um, for these items in chat, um, they need to really type them out. And I think that's one of the literacy, digital literacy skills that they gain out of playing by typing, you know, learning how to type. At least that's what M Maddie has experienced. He's Definitely. really a I really, you. really mm -hmm. fast English typer right now and even faster oh. types in Chinese. Uh, I can tell you, Jane, about typing. Oh my God, my younger son, he types, uh, he has uh, started secondary school and he has this uh, dactylography, he has typing classes. And his teacher told me, where did he learn to type so fast? Because uh, all of the other kids are so slow. They, are, they have certain practices uh, and he already types and he even went on, on the competition, uh, um, a competition, international competition for typing. So even, even th those skills have been learned through, through games. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, language. But I would like to just add that um, Jane has shared the, the blog. M Maddie has been writing. And um, th those are actually now practicing English because he wants to like do a learning diary of what we, he had either learned or maybe the words. My son didn't do writing. They did YouTube videos. So that was some kind of a process of learning. And there they picked up another... Uh, uh, things, uh, how to make videos and, and uh, practice their speaking skills. So the intrinsic motivation and typing, we could go on and on. There are a lot of um, benefits. It only depends um, uh, what age. For instance, my son still play Minecraft, not so much as other games, but this is where they started. Uh, and I had a student from secondary school who also was a Minecrafter. And um, in order to motivate him to practice his English, I told him, uh, everybody, okay, they, were, they had choices. Uh, and then uh, I gave him a choice uh, to, to have a creative, uh, 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 to create a presentation or something. And he decided, and I motivated him, okay, okay, talk about Minecraft. What do you do? What do you create? Show me the, wor uh, the world or something. And he was so thrilled that he can do that. And he created a video of five minutes, uh, speaking in English, uh, explaining, uh, show, uh, showing what he was doing and creating. And, uh, uh, and this started him creating his own uh, uh, video tutorials later on. Mainly they were in Croatian, but he also started to do some, some in English. But until that, he didn't had any motivation of speaking English. And after I motivated him to show what he's doing in the game, he was so thrilled to show off in a way what he has built. So there are things that, uh, at least for motivation, it, it works great. And th th that's just one example. Thank you, thank you. And we have Camilla Yamashiro, who, who's been also sharing in the chat. Um, I don't know if Yamashiro would like to take the mic and share or if Walt, Walton, one of our participants in Minecraft MOOC, would like to share your thoughts. Uh, I don't know if you can can hear me actually. Yes, yes I can hear you, yes. <laughs> my, my husband's already sleeping. That's why I'm not with the camera on. <laughs> okay. it, it's late at night here and already. you're from Japan? Yes, I live in Japan, but I'm Brazilian actually. Okay. <laughs> but I live in Japan for a while. And yeah, I learned English in, in Brazil, which is an EFL context. So I didn't have any chance to actually practice the language, but I always play a lot of video games. And that's the, the, the language that you use over there, right? And I have friends that I never met in person that I have over 20 years playing video games and we speak English some I don't even know where they actually are, but we always speak English and I learn my vocabulary of mostly expressions or phrasal verbs. I learn everything uh, gaming because I didn't know, I, I just know the, the actual meaning of the word, the dictionary meaning of the words. And you just learn kind of some part of the English, but not the entire English. And you'd only realize that when you're actually speaking with someone else. And when you're gaming, you have to negotiate the meaning all the time. Some are native speakers, some are not, have 
so many different accents and you're, you have access to all of that, that shows that English is now actually the lingua franca and gaming now is, is showing this so much. Uh, I, I would like to add that, although in some contexts, girls don't play a lot, at least in my context, they play as much as the guys. Uh, I have several groups on Discord that's only girls playing. I play oh, several wow. different games. Great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm using games to teaching pronunciation. And it's the motivation is, 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 is so true. It's the main point. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to teaching now, right? I teach private class for adults. And all of them want to learn because of games. Or, or games directly or it's for watching games because now Twitch is a, is a trend too. And they really like to participate in streams and all of that. And when they are playing, when we, we made a session on Discord and we go to play a game, they are way more engaged and willing to try the language than in a, inside the classroom. So addressing to... Um, uh, Mr. Carroll that was talking about using how you're actually gonna use the this in the in the context of the gaming. For me, it's the pronunciation part because then for EFL context is is where you're exposed to the authentic uh, environment to practice the language, which we don't have it outside the classroom. But the, if you create this this possibility for the students, they are more than willing to to try. In classroom, I try and they are shy. They're super shy about it. But as soon as they start to play, they forget that they don't know, know or not know the language. They just start to speak. You know, sometimes it's super wrong. Someone corrected. You have the recast right there. And they pick up the accent, everything. They, they start not speaking at all. They end up speaking entire phrases in a native accent. And, and it's just a, a wonderful tool, a wonderful. I think it works so well. I think they are totally immersed in the game that they actually do not care. They speak, they communicate like in real life. And that's the fun about it. To yes. learn without actually realizing you are learning. Right? Yes, I, I told them all the time that I trick them to learn because they don't realize that they're having a <laughs> class in English. <laughs> and if you don't, uh, if you're not in that world with them or with your your peers, you know, your, your fellow teachers, if you're not in that world, you can't really experience, you, you need to experience it in order to understand what it's like. Um, so right now I'm doing something with arrows I got. I'm, oh, I think I might've got something. <laughs> there, I'm, I'm, this is a good place to attract phantoms. Phantoms fly at you from out of the air, but it's gonna get dark uh, light in a minute and then we'll be able to see them more clearly. But that's, that's basically what I'm doing. This is, this I, I is think it's, I think it is really critical that any teacher that wants to use Minecraft, not be an expert at it, but have like to gone in and you get the feel for what Minecraft as a world is, uh, what are the basic rules of how the world works. Yeah, uh, certainly that's, that's, that's necessary. What, that's what we're doing with each other and we really enjoy it. And it's yeah. like any other space. You could go to Second Life and spend time there if you wanted and accomplish. I mean, the, honestly, I can do almost nothing in Minecraft and actually don't want to learn beyond that. You know, I don't want to learn how to make portion. I don't want to do any of that stuff, but I've learned a tremendous amount about simply how it works enough mm -hmm. that I would feel comfortable uh, yes. using Minecraft as a kind of communal kind of process, sending my students off there to do it. Yeah, the more you learn about it, the, it's, it's like any other tool. The more you learn about that tool, the more you see what the affordances are. And you can then uh, use that tool to do what, what you, you want to accomplish. But if, if, if you don't experience it, if you don't get and, some of the depth, then... And, uh, in, hmm? and in the way, you do not need to teach them, actually. Do you ask? You are just try to be a facilitator. Ask them to help you. Yeah. And they are more Absolutely. willing to do that. Yeah. And when they teach you, they actually learn even more because yeah. they are well, using, you I mean, force them to use that language, right? They talk about these ideal uh, kind of inter uh, sort of language exchange situations where you have an imbalance 
uh, asymmetry in terms of language, you might have the expert language teacher and the novice in the language, but then you have you know, another asymmetry where, for example, the learner is the expert in the gaming, for example, and the teacher. And so you have this ideal situation of sort of the flow of knowledge, the language and the gaming. Yes, perfect. This is what Maddy now does, and this is what Philip used to do when we started uh, the my evil Minecraft. And uh, 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 they sometimes even make fun of us, at least of me. I, I, when I started building, I would crash mainly things than build anything, build few things, and then I just uh, didn't know how to use my mouse in the beginning. They, were, they were making fun of me, but all in all. Um, they love to be teachers in, in that way as well. So, uh, and it makes them even more motivated to learn and maybe do other things, even that they are not still realizing that. Um, in the communication, um, sorry, in the chat, Camilla just said um, about being exposed to many different accents. And uh, we were just uh, uh, explaining that it's very good not to just be exposed to American and British accent, which we can see yeah. on TV, for instance, in my country, and I suppose the same in Brazil, for instance, or maybe in Taiwan, right? But actually, um, you are uh, students nowadays will mainly uh, in Croatia will mainly be exposed to uh, people worldwide who do, who are not native speakers and they speak Absolutely. English with their own accent. And this is yeah. sometimes why I also have my students communicate in video conferences or not just also uh, playing uh, games because they have they have to understand that there are different accents not only two dif uh, two accents uh, in the world and this is what helps them to uh, to even uh, learn learn english even better or maybe try to compare how good they are or can they improve or, or yeah. something okay well, it is it is 12 o'clock. Uh, I wanted to just comment really quick on what uh, Vance was doing there with the phantoms, because I think one kind of interesting thing about that is that's a relatively new feature that was added to the game recently. And it it kind of punishes you for not sleeping in game. If your character goes three days without sleeping, it gets attacked by these phantoms. And I feel like there there's kind of a real world lesson in there for these yes. kids that are playing video games too much. Uh, but but um, you want, we want them to attack. Well, if you're trying to harvest materials from them, then yes. Well, I, um, I don't. I don't. I just set up uh, phantom observatories, and I yeah. love. I take out the blocks of glass so they will come and nest right on top of me, and then I take photos. I love your <laughs> yeah. photos of the phantom. Yes. There. I have. I have never tried to kill one ever. Ah. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. So very um, elusive. I believe we're to the end of our time, but there is, I don't think there's another group coming in after us, according to the schedule I just looked at. So um, if anyone has any final thoughts they'd like to make, um, to my students that are here, you you are not required to stick around any, any longer, but I hope you uh, gained something from this conversation. And uh, to everyone else, thank you so much for all your sharing and um, especially like the things about what you're doing with students or kind of the incidental learning and intrinsic motivation that you've seen in your own children or in your own students. Thank you very Can much. Can I ask Vince be... and uh, yeah, Jane yeah. and Aaron in, in the end? So guys, which mode do you actually prefer? Is it more survival or creative mode after playing so many years? I prefer survival mode and um, uh, when I'm on like, and I think with like multiplayer servers that I've been on and kind of my thinking on this one is, um, I, in my thinking survival is the game and um and so like if you can build huge beautiful castles in survival mode with resources you've gathered yourself i see that as a really big sense of accomplishment um creative mode i see more like um like the old microsoft paint that we used to use back in the 80s you know like it's it's it, they can do whatever they want and i think that's fine for um for some context and some learners but yeah like when i'm playing it's you know i whenever people ask me oh can i switch over to creative mode or something like that i'm always like wary i'm like oh why don't you try why don't you try survival mode first? You know, why don't, why don't you learn? But we even set up a, a creative world for um, for that type of experimentation and stuff I mean, like that. Creative, creative can be very nice for like uh, you know if you want to learn how to how to build something. Yeah, and like redstone. Once, once you know how to do it, then you can try to do it uh, in 
in survival. Now, of course, that depends entirely what you do. Like I said, I, I just run around. And yeah. honestly, I have never built a house ever, not a single time in six years. I simply dig holes, make windows, and that, that's it. Sometimes I occupy temporarily a temple. You know, that's so. I mean, it just like if for that, um, there's no real point in being in creative. Mm -hmm. So I don't. You're, you are our explorer in Minecraft. 